and one of these trees is the sun. And you can see that the tree, the, the smaller tree, the younger tree has grown in the shadow of the great tree. Hey guys, I'm Harmony Klingenmeyer and welcome to Hope Arises. This show exists to inspire and empower you to walk in obedience to the voice of God. The Lord is calling his children to boldly follow him, no matter what the cost, in order to see our homes, our hearts, and our generations transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am so excited about today's broadcast. We have a very special visitor with us today. Her name is Carrie Pomeroli. She is an incredible stand-up comedian. Let me just share a little bit of information with you about Carrie. Probably a lot of you watching today already know her name. She's called Hollywood's Good Girl. She is an accomplished actress, stand-up comedian, best-selling author, and I have to say, her book has had a massive impact on my heart. She's a Christian speaker and veteran of television with credits that include 29 appearances on NBC's The Tonight Show and Comedy Central. Carrie's latest book, The Confessions of a Proverbs 32 Woman, is ranked number one in Amazon's religious humor. And if you guys go and listen or read that book, you'll know why it's number one. Her latest films include the critically acclaimed documentary, American Jesus. I want to see that. I would love for you to tell us a little bit about that. And the Brennan Manning story. She has two daughters, Lucy and Ruby, and the family makes their home in California. Carrie, thank you so much for joining us today on Hope Arises. Hello. Well, um, I have been reading your book, Carrie, and I have to say it is hilarious. First of all, your writing style is phenomenal. You Thank can you. hear, even as I'm an aud auditory learner, so I always listen to the books that I love. Right. And you can tell that um, you, you're you just such a dynamic speaker. Well, they just let me put my diary on paper and then they publish them. I don't know. Because the first book I wrote was called, If I'm Weighty on God, What Am I Doing in the Christian Chat Room? Confessions of a Do-It-Yourself Single. And that was basically my diary from kindergarten through my 20s. And I just published it. But there were a lot of other Christian singles that didn't get married after puberty. Uh, they're trying to figure life out. And I just, I, I always feel like my dirty laundry is a gift to my readers because then they don't feel so alone. They're not the only hot mess for Jesus. That is exactly how I felt as I was reading it. In fact, it was as if you were just reading my mind a little bit. I think a lot of women in the church, women who are passionate about Jesus, women who are passionate about their families, but they read chapters like Proverbs 31 and they think, I'm just not good enough to fit this mold. I did uh, all the time or I just skipped it. but. You know, I think the book is kind of a love letter to the Proverbs 31 woman and to have that imaginary relationship with her was really fun to write. And I, I definitely am a Proverbs 32 woman. She rises late. Her kids make her breakfast. Like, you know, I don't pay retail, uh, all those things. And so through the years in my comedy act, I always joked about it. And um, so I wrote a devotional as well that goes with the book. Uh, so when you're done with that, you can grab that. It's called the Confessions of the Proverbs 32 Woman Devotional. But um, I'm really glad that the publisher gave me a voice because I really think that women like us, Harmony, we need a voice. We are not making crock pot farm to table meals seven days a week. I did not breast my, breastfeed my kids till they were seven. I'm sorry. So uh, there's there's a bunch of people more like me and you than, than we realize. Yeah. You know what? I'm inspired by you because of how hardworking you are. I consider myself an ambitious uh, woman of God. I love being in the pulpit. I love using my voice. I love preaching the gospel. And it's so amazing to connect with other women who aren't afraid to use their voices. I think in this, in this day and age, we're looking for Deborah's. And there's a whole generation of young women who need women like us to look up to you. Don't you agree? Yeah. And I'm, I've got two in my living room right now i've got a, a how old is she 10 10 and 13 and i'm like you you've got to use your voice in every way shape or form you are the next generation you've got you know and i've trained them up uh to be bold and so um 
I and my mother likes she's Presbyterian. So when I preach on a Sunday morning, she's like, well, why don't we just call it presenting? I'm like, whatever, Barb, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I feel a call in my life to preach the gospel. And if God wants to use comedy as that vehicle, then then so be it. Well, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about your girls. I know that you have a brand new podcast. Your podcast is called This Is Not A Good Idea. And I have to tell you, it's hilarious. So tell us a little bit about that because I know that'll help us get so, to know your children. Yeah, I was, I'm a single mom uh, and their father lives in my garage. That's not a joke. He's a comedian and everyone always thinks I'm kidding. But during COVID, we were all sort of cooped up together and trying to pivot and do digital things. and. Uh, their dad was like, we were arguing one day at dinner. He goes, this would make a great podcast. And we were both like, this is not a good idea. He's like, you should just call it that. And you should just get on camera and do what you guys do best, which is argue. Um, because I don't know if you know this, because you you have like 80,000 children, but something happens at the magical age of 13 where they know everything about everything in the whole wide world. You just want to call NASA and be like, you should harness her brain because she's done growing, she's done learning, she's peaked at her intelligence. And so she's never wrong because she's 13 and she watches YouTube, right? So, I mean, dear God, yes, Princess Diana really did die in a garden. I, I did look that up on Surrey. We had a 30 minute argument that Christopher Columbus came from India. I mean, she's so good at lying, I believe her, you know? So um, so we we talk about top, but she's a great conversationalist and. You know, kids today need us to be open. You, oh my gosh, you'd be such a great example of just being real. They they have stuff that we didn't have to deal with. There's topics uh, that we didn't have to deal with. They know way more than we think they know. Uh, that is for sure. And it's just, we need to be open. So I hope that our podcast lets people in behind closed doors of us, but really can spur some conversations between parents and their kids. Exactly. I totally agree. I think the more open we can be with our children and really, I believe in the law of first mention, you know, when, when, if you want to be a voice of influence in your kids' lives, you need to be the first person to talk to That's them great. about multiple topics. That's, and I always am like, look, I am not your Holy Spirit. I need you to make some decisions. I'm going to be there to guide you. And I, you know, uh, may want to yank some things you know, and do it and just yank it. But it's like, so I'm pretty strict in my house. I'm very like mean mom. I don't let my kids, I'm going to lose half your viewers, but I don't let my kids read Harry Potter. And so um, she got given this Harry Potter book and it was in front of me and it was like at a friend's house and I didn't want to make like a thing about it. And she's 13 going on 14. And so I said to her, look, you know how I feel about this. Like, you know, I have strong feelings about witchcraft and all that. But I need you to pray to the Holy Spirit and let me know what God is telling you about this because I cannot micromanage you all the way through college. So I'm trying to give her a little bit more freedom and it was really nerve wracking. And I had a bunch of like legalism coming at me like you should have just taken it and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, how are they ever going to grow if we don't give them a like a little freedom now? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, if we don't, if we don't teach them how to manage their freedom, they'll find their own ways to be free. And uh, girl, you really had 19 foster kids. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I we, was it like, did you have long-term fosters or was it like a month here and there? So the three that we have now were our first three. They came right in a row and they've been with us now almost six years. And then over the course of those six years, we've had the the other 16 and those were mostly short term placements. Yeah, I mean, I thought, and, wow. So were the first three your first three kids? That's it. And God wow, that's amazing. set us up and taught us so much through that. So do you think those three will hang out for a while or how does the foster thing work? They're adopted now. Oh, okay. So, so now you're fully responsible for messing up their lives. <laughs> it's all you. Exactly. It's all you. And and you know what? I just to I so agree with you about what you're saying about freedom. Um, and I'll just you know, for transparency's sake, you know, it's important to be vulnerable, and people know that we're we're on camera, but we are walking through a lot in our personal lives, and the more we can share our personal struggles and breakthroughs, the more people can learn, you know, they're not alone. My I think my book is like 15 chapters of vulnerability and hot messness. 
And, exactly. you, know, and, and I, you know, when you go through something and it's really painful, you think, this is what I think, and I bet you think this, this is gonna make a really good message someday. But right now I'm on the floor doing the ugly cry, but there's gotta be a lesson here. There's gotta be something God's gonna use. But, um, you know, it's really tough. I have a chapter at the end of my book and it's called Mean Girls. And uh, it's funny because, you know, we women, we don't necessarily change from eighth grade sometimes when we're in our emotions. And I, I had some tough circumstances because I am a Christian and because I am who I am. Some of the women in my past, like college and all that kind of stuff, kind of, as Lucy would, would have said, didn't want to invite me to their party. Well, this party was in the Hamptons and it was uh, like at a beach house. And I found out about it on Facebook. And uh, I wanted to do that millennial thing where I write something passive aggressive on social media and like tag them and be like the devil that worked today, you know. And uh, it was kind of like God was like, listen, you are my daughter and people are watching you. How are you going to react to this behind closed doors when nobody's looking off the flip in social media in real life? How are you going to react to this? How are you going to show grace? How are you going to show boundaries? How are you going to show love? And how are you going to pray for who needs to be prayed for? And I was like, that is not what I had in mind at all. That is not as an Italian. But uh, I God showed me, you know, in, in our walk, you know, what we've talked about earlier, what we've all gone through things. God will mature us and show us to have when grace, when nobody's looking, is a real sign of a mature person who's walking with the Lord. I totally agree. I totally agree. I love what you're talking about. You're really, you're hitting on some things that are really um, close to my heart. Uh, I really feel like God is co going after comparison and competition amongst women in the church in this season. I and I'm sure that you you feel the same that. We're called to link arms, lock shields, celebrate one another, and stop uh, shooting our champions and heckling our champions. Yeah, and you know, mine was with non-Christians, and they were just like repelled by the fact that I, what I stand for politically, what I stand for ethically, and God was like, everybody's not your assignment. You don't have to be best friends with everybody, but it's a matter that you show love and grace. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the, and it's, it's stunning to me that it's even can sometimes be even worse in the church. Oh girl, that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> exactly. Well, another topic that I just loved um, in your book that you were, that you covered was your precious relationship with your daughters and how you have uh, believed and walked a, a life of the supernatural with your youngest daughter, Ruby. Can you share a little bit about your testimony? Yeah, oh, gosh, yeah. and make there. sure if they want to hear the whole story, they can go on my YouTube channel. Um, her name is Ruby. So if you go on Carrie Pomerley's YouTube, you can look up Ruby's testimony. But, uh, you know, I believe in the supernatural. I believe in healing. It was never a problem. And I think the devil was like, well, let me, let me test that. Uh, let me test that. My daughter was born with a bunch of diseases, a bunch of incurable things, very, very serious. And some of them weren't even available on YouTube. Can you believe it? There was no healing testimony of the chromosome disorder until now. Uh, so it was just kind of a walk of faith when I had to like grit down and get low with Jesus and be that inner pit bull and be like, does Psalm 103 apply? To what the doctors say is incurable does it apply my mother's going through breast cancer at the same at the, she was going through breast cancer for the third time like does the healing miracle apply to me or just everybody else that i prayed for and so it's been a 10-year journey it's been cuckoo for cocoa puffs but this kid is not suffering from a chromosome disorder she's in regular school she's not mentally disabled she's not physically disabled she's not on oxygen she's not having leg braces all the things they said she's a straight A student. Yes. Come on. Student. Yeah, come on, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'll take all the credit for that. And uh, so God is, is continually showing up. We're still walking it. Uh, people thought, oh, I'm going to be a special needs mom. I took that term and threw it in the garbage. All kids are special and all kids have needs. And the only thing more special about this kid is that the devil tried to get at her really early in life. And I was like, not today. You messed with the wrong mom. 
you mess with the wrong mom, right, Harmony? Yeah. So um, we're still walking out a few symptoms and things like that, but she's a radical testimony of, of like healed is healed. Healed is healed, not kind of healed, not like high functioning. Healed is like no mental, dis like, no, you will go to college, you will get out of my house, you will get a job, you know, so, yeah. Like I, I, and I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, but I think, Carrie, you're a massive risk taker. And I think even addressing this issue, believing that God healed your daughter from a chromosome disorder um, and walking that out in, in the daily and also walking it out in the way you speak is it, it feels like you're you're literally the thin ice of religion is cracking all around. And I'm in harmony. I am militant. I am militant with with her. Like you could stop me in a grocery store, and you might see a symptom on her and say, "Oh, you know, it's a precious angel." And I'll go, "I have no idea what you're talking about." Like I have no idea. And so healing is healing, and until it's finished, where somebody is like. And I know the world has their own like standards of like, okay, if if you don't have cancer anymore, you can go get a, a report in your body. And I can go get a chromosome report right now because she's so like high smart and doing all these things because the doctors have no explanation. But I'm like, I don't really care. It's just that her life is that of a normal kid. But I never bought that t-shirt and I never told her she was sick and I never told her she had to. And so she didn't get healed in one day. It was months and years and, you know, but when she needed to walk, she walked. When she needed to talk, she talked. When she needed to, like, God is always like, has she missed a beat? I'm like, never. Like, is she the Val Victorian? Like, she crushed fourth grade. Like, is she doing long division and doing all this stuff? I'm like, yeah, it's hard. She has to work harder than her, her uh, classmates. That may not be forever, but I've started a ministry now for parents that are, have children that are born with challenges diseases and diagnosis we have a hundred something families worldwide uh you can go to healing for chromosomes.com so i use what the devil meant for bad for good you know that's so powerful wow so you're reaching into this other people's lives other families lives that are walking through the exact same thing and the incredible thing about it is the church is okay with certain types of healing we, right you know, girl right and then when they see Ruby Joy walk down the stage, there's not a dry eye. I mean, I don't care what kind of church. It's undeniable. Like, I have fruit. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I have report cards and all this stuff. And I'm not trying to prove. Sometimes I feel like I'm trying to prove to the world she's healed or prove whatever. I'm like, but honestly, my proof is that I've raised a 10-year-old girl who's had a normal life, who goes to birthday parties and goes swimming and goes to the beach and is very funny and sarcastic. And so... Yeah, I want her face to be completely free of all symptoms and be done. And I just got this video. There's this kid in Texas who's a valedictorian of his high school class, like totally 100%. And he's like, you know, I was diagnosed with Down syndrome when I was younger. And he doesn't have a speck, just a, not even a speck on him. And he's like, and the Lord healed me. So I don't Come care on. if it's palsy or Down syndrome or autism, whatever. If you want your kid to be healed or you want your look at her come here come here i'm talking about you you can have a popsicle if you come on my podcast now don't embarrass me this is my miracle child who wants a popsicle this is ruby hi, say hi. Say hi. hi. Say hi to her. so ruby did you make these yeah how'd you make them what'd you put in them uh, she's a chef strawberries? yeah strawberries and what else do you remember we made them last week Rice peas. raspberries and Yes. And I was talking about how I prayed for you when you were sick and what did God do for you? Yeah, he healed you. How are your grades? Tell the people. All A's. All A's. Uh, yeah, for four quarters. Now look adorable. Show them how cute you are. Okay, bye. Go. Ruby, you're amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your testimony. Thank you for testifying to God's power. Yeah, we made these really good popsicles and now they won't come out of the thing. And enjoy your amazing popsicle. I don't know. You're going to have to ask your sister. I got to finish this podcast. You got to ask your sister. I'm you on TV. Really no, you got to ask your sister. I'll oh. get, okay. Give me five minutes. Okay. Yes, this is, this is real oh life. People. This is amazing. Go. This is totally beautiful. I, you know what? My kids want to be on the podcast too. And now they're going to be like, mom, you got to let us on the podcast. Cause you let miss Ruby on the podcast. I'm like, yeah. Okay. okay.
You know what? We have experienced so much similar things in our own home with our children who came to us. I was telling you earlier with mm -hmm. fetal alcohol syndrome, um, with, uh, one of our children had a, a tremor, fine motor, gross motor skills, totally missing. Um, and they came to us with communication disabilities and all those things have fallen Psalm away. Psalm 103, girl, Psalm 103, for exactly. the Lord has told all my diseases. And I really think with every testimony, there's, there's always a story about some crazy mom, just some crazy mom that was telling the devil to get off their kid, to get out of their house, that was praying over them when they were sleeping that was praying over like i take my kids to like deliverance meetings i mean i'm like we are no joke in this family i'm like you will pray from the time you will pray the devil to get off you we don't play in my house and you know what we don't play either we prophesy we pray and pray in the spirit my children yeah. prophesy my children I gotta come to your church. you need to have a comedy i'm gonna come to your church it's a great place it's a great place you know what that's awesome. Thank you so much for letting Ruby come on because you know what? This is, that's why we exist. We exist to do hard things and you're really doing something um, that's outside of even, even my experience, which I feel like I'm out there on, on thin air with God a lot. Okay. I have to be honest. Like, I feel like I'm pretty awesome, <laughs> faith. but Carrie, I feel like you're, you're really breaking the boxes of, um, of religion. And we are, we are experiencing revival. We are experiencing creative miracles. Like, you know, I said, if she had been born with one leg, I would have prayed another leg. Like I, there's no limit to what I would have prayed. Amen. And so when you are walking at the faith level that God wants you, that, you know, you need to be, it's not even hard. You know, the thing is, I got to give God the glory. And sometimes I'm in awe because did I want her to have all A's? No, I wanted her to pass third grade. Like I like I didn't want her to get kicked out for eating her earthquake kit like she did last year. Like, you know, I'm like, don't eat the canned tuna. So the fact that God just takes my prayers and then raises me and goes higher and goes higher and goes higher. Like I... I, he's just like, raise your expectations, Gary. Like, why are you limiting what I'm going to do for Ruby uh, academically? You should want recompense from the devil. So I always pray a hundredfold. Like, that kid should be the smartest kid in the class. So the teacher called me this past year and said, your daughter is the highest GPA in the class. And I'm like, oh, dang, I didn't even cheat this year on Zoom or anything. So, um, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. And I'm just like, I'm just pressing, pressing, pressing. Uh, for all those other kids, like I feel like Ruby's the example. Ruby's the forerunner. There's other kids that I that I know that were born with chromosome stuff, and they're black belts and karate's, and they're chess yep. champions, and they're just leading a good life. We're not saying that we, they have to go on Sid Roth. I mean, probably they will, but uh, you know, it's just like just lead your life, lead your best life, as the kids like to say. And God's like, she's happy. I'm like, yeah, she's really happy. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. So tell us a little bit about Lucy. I know you have your podcast with Lucy. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Lucy's hard, so. I'm sorry. So I just can't hear you. I think she does. And she's going through that 13 year old phase where, uh, you know, I know nothing. So, uh, you know, so that's delightful, but she's, that's really funny. Cause you have all these different kids. Like, like Lucy's the Val Victorian without working that hard. You know, she's always like front of the line. And it's interesting to have two different kids and have two different struggles. So I have to make sure that I'm sensitive that Lucy's not always having it together and that sensitive that that she doesn't have to be perfect all the time. Uh, you know, it's just, it's weird to have this one kid that's always at the front and center of everything. And then when Ruby, like she had her dance recital or she had dance camp last week. And my friend and I, we have this joke she's not we're not at like prima ballerina yet we're not like you know in her head she's very positive about her skills but i would not call her like the best dancer and so she's in like the third row which is the back row and i literally i go i'm like why is my child in the back row why and then her dad's like could you just calm down could you just stop being dance moms for a minute i'm like why is she not on a raised platform why are they not circling around her i don't understand what Oh, so man. I just, you know, it's a day to day, right? Exactly. Exactly. I have a 13 year old as well. He's a boy and he actually ran away from home this summer. And that was a life harrowing experience. And a God, God met him. 
he was only yeah. gone three hours, but God met him in those three hours and um, it totally transformed his life. So sometimes our kids have to walk through challenging things too. Yep. And we got to let them. Yep. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your new YouTube show, Cooking My Roots. Well, I was cooped up again during COVID and my mother sent me some recipes for my grandmother's. And I was like, this would be really fun to try to cook my grandmother's recipes. So the show is called Cooking My Roots, and you're in the kitchen with my dead grandmas. And uh, the little tidbit that you probably found out about me real quick is I'm not a cook. So I think that's even um, more unique about my cooking show because the recipes are like a little bit of this. And they don't say things like turn the oven on before. You know, you're supposed to just magically know that you turn the oven on. And so my ex-husband's my camera guy. Ruby's my wingman. And uh, we're having, you know, we've done about eight or nine episodes. And it's just a good laugh break. If you just want to laugh and watch me try to boil water. like So it's on my YouTube channel and we're just having fun. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I, you know what? The family really matters. And I can tell your family really matters to you and that you are dedicated um, to your home. And I think that's really powerful in the season as well as women that we um, that it's we're OK with loving our homes, that we don't allow the pressure of the world to come at us. Um, so I much. mean, I I uh, I just try to laugh a lot. I mean, if you can laugh with your kids, laugh at your kids. I love to embarrass my kids. It is my joy. All I have to do to embarrass my daughter is wake up like that's it. I can embarrass her by being alive. Or just go like with their friends in the car and like my little 80s jam came on I circle and they're like, mother, stop it. I was like, do you want me to get out of the car? Cause I will, I will do a dance break in the Starbucks parking lot. <laughs> Don't ask me twice. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. I really feel like God is restoring the family in this season. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for coming on Hope Arises. It's been a joy to talk to you. I love your candid personality. And I want to encourage our uh, viewers to go on carriepalm.com and purchase Carrie's book, Tales of a Proverbs 32 Woman. Or and Amazon. You, you can get it on Amazon or um, anywhere that books are sold. Exactly. It's worth it. You want to read Thank it. You. It's hilarious. And, and I'm glad you're enjoying the Audible version. That's really fun. Thanks for listening to that. It's like being in your living room and now having I this, know. Movie, having this totally conversation is. with you has shown me exactly how much the book is like you. It's fantastic. I love it. Aww. I'm wondering if you, Carrie, will, will you pray for our viewers? Just bless us today. Yes, absolutely. Father God, I just thank you for Harmony. I thank you for this show. I thank you for the people that are affected by the show in this very moment. And every time we speak a word, God, there's somebody that needs to hear that word. So many times was I driving down the street, listening to a podcast, listening to a radio show, and you spoke. And there's just somebody right now that's driving in a car, that's sitting at home, that's listening to this prayer, that's like, pick me, God, pick me. I never get picked pick me. And it's like, you could just reach into their house and say, my darling, my darling, I picked you the day you were born. I picked you the day you were conceived. And there is nothing that is beyond me. There is nothing that is too hard for me. There is nothing that you can't ask me for that you can't come to me. And I'm just waiting. I've already picked you. I've already selected you. I've already loved you since the day you were conceived. And I'm just waiting for you to turn your eyes to me and say, I'm here so I can do a work. That's what God is saying to somebody right now. He's saying, so I can do the work, so that I can do the change, so that I can do the situation and make the crooked places straight, so that I can love you. Will you let me? I feel like that's what God is saying to somebody right, right now. Pull that car over. Do what you got to do. Raise your hands to heaven and say, I'm here. And just watch God work. And more importantly, if you're saying I'm here and you don't have a relationship that's verifiable with Jesus Christ, and you want to go to heaven, you can just pray right now, Jesus, I need a savior. Jesus, I am a sinner. Jesus, I am a hot mess. Will you be my savior? Will you come into my heart? Will you walk with me? So I am never alone. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we want to hear your testimonies. If you gave your life to Jesus. Yes, today I do too. 
So find me on Instagram, Carrie Palm, Twitter, all that good stuff. Yes, yes. Go ahead and like us on Facebook. Uh, go to Hope Arises, or I should say, yes, go to Life Network for Women um, and go to CarriePalm.com. We are so excited to connect with you and we look forward to seeing you again next week on Hope Arises at 4 p.m. Uh, on Tuesdays. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.